the second passage, this is a paean to Julia Margaret Cameron's work, and we like her because she's realistic. Um, you get these traces in the first paragraph of the fact that these are just real people. They're more like family photographs, and in line 13, these traces are what give the photographs their life, their charm. In the second paragraph, we really sum up that second paragraph in the last sentence, still photographs with theatrical scenes. They can never escape being pictures of actors. So where um, the theater, you know, can allow you to immerse yourself in the drama, that still photograph takes you back out of it. You can see that is somebody dressed up like Abraham Lincoln. And yet, the final paragraph, what gives Cameron's pictures of actors their special quality is their combination of that amateurism and artistry. Yes, that's obviously a broomstick. Yes, that's obviously cloth. That's not the ocean. Yet still, um, line 50, the homely truth of the sitting gives right of place to the romantic fantasy of its director. So the whole passage exists to say that Cameron's work is great because it is imaginative and yet it is clearly grounded in the real. Like... These are people with props. All right, let's answer questions. The main point of the passage, Cameron's work is great because of the combination of amateurism and artistry, uh, because we can see that they're real people and yet believe that they're making art. Answer choice B, the peculiar charm of Cameron's fancy subject pictures derives from the viewer's simultaneous awareness of the fictional scene portrayed and the circumstances of its portrayal. The simultaneous awareness of the scene, the ability to lose ourselves in the artistry, and also its circumstances, the realism. It's a broom. It's a damn broom. And you see that my answer did not even vaguely attempt to capture the language of the right answer choice. It did absolutely, though, capture the content. Question nine. Just another main point question. I mean, aren't they all? Uh, why did the author mention the props to get across that point that it's a blend of amateurism and artistry? Why mention those props? Because this is what the amateurism was like. And so we say examples of amateurish aspects of the work. For question 10, what is the claim about suspension of disbelief? It is that in a painting you can suspend your disbelief, in a photograph you cannot. Well, what would add to that? We want to support that claim. And if D is true that a painter can suppress the details about a sitter that are at odds with the imaginary persona, then you'd be removing that amateurism that the author found so charming about Cameron's work. Um, and that would allow us a reason to believe that you can suspend your disbelief about a painting. You can look at it and think it is an image of Washington crossing the Delaware rather than uh, somebody sitting in a paper mache boat. For number 11, first of all, I'm just never going to get tired of seeing the LSAT write fancy subject. It's fancy. Second, what is Cameron like? Well, again, as always, another main point question. She brings the amateurism together with the artistry. So we want some situation where somebody does that same thing, you know? Gives flight to our imagination even though they're writing damn broomsticks. See the sculptor whose work possesses the certain grandeur, flight to our imagination, even though they're made out of ordinary objects. And you take that same duality that we saw in the main point, and we saw emphasized in question 9, uh, emphasized again in question 10, over and over and over. And that's why we read the way we do. Question 12 is just four things that the author absolutely said, and we can just list them one by one. Answer choice A is in line 34. Answer choice B is in line 45. Answer choice C is in line 43. Answer choice D is in line 39. And answer choice E is not in there anywhere. It's the right answer. Also, E is just antithetical. So, uh, succeeds only to the extent that it realizes the artist's intentions. The whole passage is about how Cameron's work succeeds despite the factors that tend to thwart her grand ambitions. For 13, how do we know that the time required to take a picture was substantial in Cameron's era? 
Well, we got two pieces of evidence significantly, possibly more, but I pointed immediately to um, line 11. There are no infant Christs, <laughs> as there are in her pictures, whose faces are blurred because they moved. Why would movement blur your face? I mean, a picture is instantaneous, right? Well, it would be blurred if it were not instantaneous. And also, uh, perhaps more strongly in line 30, the Madonnas and Jesus and John the Baptists are trying desperately hard to sit still. Why do they have to try so hard to sit still? Wouldn't it just happen? Well, they'd have to try very hard to sit still if it didn't just happen instantaneously. And I think that's pretty convincing evidence that a picture was not an instantaneous thing in Cameron's time. For question 14, why did the author bring up the suspension of disbelief? It was one of her central points about Cameron's works, that doubleness, the fact that um, we're always aware of each figure's imaginary persona, you know, that's somebody pretending to be King Lear, but also their real persona, that is somebody pretending to be King Lear. And she brings it up in order to make that contrast between theater and pictures of actors, between paintings and photographs. And that contrast she used to illuminate what she liked so much about Cameron's work. B, it introduces a contrast the author uses in characterizing the peculiar nature of our response to Cameron's fancy subject paintings, pictures, not paintings, pictures. And finally, 15 ties it all up in a bow. What is the purpose of the passage to express the main point? And the main point is that Cameron's pictures, double nature is what makes them great. She is striving for art. She is constricted by her subjects. Uh, and yet the double nature of that fact is what makes her so charming. To argue that the tension between Cameron's aims, the flights of fancy, and her results, the infants staring at you with frank hatred, trying to sit still, uh, enhances the aesthetic value. It gives it its charm and life. And that's the second passage.